so yeah it's lovely to hear everyone sharing and um yeah i think that point of um of making effort you know at, having grown up in Gyan, um you know my life my whole lifestyle culture is brahmin so and that's quite unusual for for, for people because everyone has most people have grown up a certain way and then found profound gyan at some point in their life even if it's in their early 20s you know still there's a there's a, there's a whereas for me the solid grounding is is brahmin lifestyle so i've not had to work at that element of things um so much I've had to work at it a little bit because <laughs> then you're influenced, aren't you, by things, um, especially being in a world of acting, performing, artistic world in this time of the cycle. There's a lot of influence. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm really just, uh, I love just focusing on what's necessary, um, especially in these days, in these years, last few years. Just focus on what's necessary because there's so much even within i find even within the brahmin uh, system <clears throat> you know there's so much that comes to us in the way of sustenance so many classes so much you know <laughs> you're reading the murli and then you're reading five other things <laughs> in the murli after murli <laughs> quotes from people and daddy's class and this and that you know and so much is coming our way and especially in the last year online uh, uh, and I think just learning to, to to hone in on what's necessary. And I remember Genti Ben actually shared, um, she's she's a, she's an advocate for this in her life. You know, if there's anything she needs to know, it was either ever Baba, uh, you know, Avya Baba, Daddy, or the Murli. And now both of those other things are not here. It's really just the Murli, you know, um, and. I, that really struck me actually i never i never thought of it like that for a long time because we have so much sustenance from people around us and we're in a different stage now aren't we as a family and um so it's really beautiful to still have them really and to, to develop a, a strong relationship with it um because everyone has their their little things about sometimes what Baba says and how he says it and all that kind of stuff don't they so I've never been one to I've always from the beginning I've always had a sense that Baba has never even when someone tells me even when seniors say you know Baba's being really strict today I never ever took it that way never take it that way because if he's really God <laughs> then he wouldn't be so human in his um, intention you know <clears throat> so I've always felt that strong sense of Baba's kindness and love coming through the the perhaps you know more matter of fact statements that he makes. So that's always really lovely. And yes, today is humility. I think you know comparing in a way comparing himself to the other religious founders that he's just part of the flow of of the cycle. You know, so much humility and and sweetness. Um, he's so sweet. <laughs> And, and so the other day I was thinking, you know, sometimes it can get a bit of stacker in the sweetness, although I've never experienced that through through Brahmin life. I've, I've experienced it in other ways, you know, but I've never experienced Baba to be saccharinely sweet. It's like sweet, sweet in, in, in like a, it's indescribable in a way, you know, I'm sure we've all experienced some level of that, but <clears throat> continue to experience that. Yeah. And, um, the other thing that I really want to, that I really am focusing on and, and appreciate in today's Murli overall is this idea of truth. And, you know, our sanskars, my sanskars are having a whale of a time <laughs> coming up and, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> their final, it's like their final rights in a way. <laughs> They're coming up to say goodbye, you know. Um, and, but I really feel this strong sense of truth, of my truth, just just there and detached from all of those things, you know? And as much as I want to feel bad about myself and as much as I want to criticize and as much as I want to do all of those things, there is really a strong feeling of this underlying thread of truth, you know, that's not dissipated, but that is really, even in the, you know, for me, I, I would say I haven't done as much <clears throat> Well, I've done a lot, but you know, there's it's about 
I feel there's so much more I could do yoga wise and like we all you know we all feel that way but even in the amount of work that I have done on myself there is still a strong foundation so imagine where I could be in you know if I just gave it a bit more attention and so just that feeling of and and I think that's what Baba really comes to do. He 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 gives us the knowledge to be able to to get to for us to get to this place um, of understanding that this truth is really indestructible. So 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 I just identify with that, and then you start to develop a less um, toxic relationship with the sanskars and the stuff that we want to change, the old stuff, the learnt stuff, I guess. Um, yeah. So, so that uh, it's just nice to hear that from the humility, and you know, when he talks about imbibing all virtues, I always love that because um, <clears throat> that's a high goal. Um, but it's uh, it's not just he never just says anything for the sake of it. It's always really, it's always got a deep meaning behind it, and um, even if we hear something every day, you know, he talks about being, he t how many times did he say, I'm the, I'm the God of the Gita? <laughs> or how many times did he say, I come and establish the deity religion, you know? But to really see each of those moments as the, almost like the first time you hear it, you know? I always feel like in, um, in the golden age, we probably have this <clears throat> attitude where the first time we see every time we see each other is like the first time <laughs> you know no matter how long we've known each other there's a there's a sense of us that we are so well connected so deeply connected and we know each other really well but every time we see each other it's like the first time we you know we're meeting and we're, and we're just playing and that the thrill of that you know in the golden age comes from contentment and happiness isn't it and truth and so to be able to to make that that feeling now, you know, every time I meet someone, especially with service companions, I think that's, uh, or people just around us that that trigger us, you know, to, to let go of those behaviors and to under compassionately understand those behaviors, where it's coming from. Yesterday I had a, a realization, you know, I, I responded to someone in the morning um, out of, uh, out of, um, feeling out of my depth you know I was asked to do something and I was I was saying but I need more information you know <laughs> so I was responding out of my depth and then later on in the evening I came to find out that they they were they are supporting a family member who's not so well at the moment and it really made me think oh you know we're both suffering <laughs> and so just to have compassion regardless of whether or not I think someone else is suffering or not you know and to develop that sanskar is I think is and by the way I did a compassion workshop with sister here, Sarah Eager, um, and she's a mindful self-compassion coach as well as a Raj Yogi. So um, I'm, she, we were talking a bit about the workshop we did in January for BKs. And um, one thing we came across in Amruli was Baba talking about how compassion and mercy is the very first dhar dharana that Brahmins have, should have. You know, that's the very first thing we work on. Or is our is our foundation for Brahmin life, you know, mercy and comp and compassion. Yeah, and he says it so much, you know, Amrit Vela, sit and have mercy for yourself, have mercy for the rest of the world. So I just love that. I love that approach. There is really no other way. <laughs> Everything else I feel could could lead us to some other lockic kind of you know old worldy mentality not enough people really talk about compassion to its fullest sense to its fullest the way that baba has compassion for us no matter how many mistakes we make you know he's always there to say keep going it's okay keep going he never has the inkling of you know you should be doing better <laughs> that's all our voice isn't it so yeah just some thoughts about muli and about about this life and <laughs> um i don't know what to share judy is judy is one of my inspirations <laughs> she's supported me as a as a young bk in this life so i have a lot of love for judy and canada in general <laughs> um it's so it's so nice to um I, one of my favorite things actually is meeting variety souls people who have variety personalities even denzel you know 
to, to see people in, in this, especially people who work in the arts, I always find that really beautiful. Um, <clears throat> you know, this to see a variety of people, how a variety of people can can do this work in their life, I think is proof in the pudding really, isn't it? Um, and you see so personalities of people you think you'd never be, I would never imagine you to be a Rajuki or, or a meditator. And then, and then you find out they are, you know, and it's like, wow, gosh, it's incredible how much, how inclusive it is, Baba says, unlimited, unlimited, you know. Um, yeah, and, and so I've, I I actually, I was five when my mum started to come into Glover House. In, in fact, when I was, um, when I was about one, I think, maybe just, just, one or two we went on a family trip i've got two older brothers my mom and my dad um uh one of my brothers lives in india he's a journalist the other one lives he's got a family he's got a small small kid um and uh he lives here in london and then my parents and we all grew up in gyan <coughs> but we've all done our own thing and um when i was about one we went on a family trip to india actually and uh we did like a big trip around Rajasthan and we were actually visited Abu. And um, <clears throat> I only found this out a few years ago, my mum was telling me. <clears throat> and she, uh, we visited Abu and we came across Pandabhavan. At that time, I think there was no Shantivan or anything. Brahma Kumaris was located in, in Pandabhavan. Um, this was 80, 91, 90, some, 92, something like that. And um, so we went to, to, to Pandabhavan and my mum, I was like, oh, I wonder what this place is, you know. So we went inside, and this there was very empty. There was no one there, and um, so they were. This brother was showing them around, my parents and us, and I was in a pushchair, so I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> um, but it just so happened that the day that we arrived, Baba had come in Om Shanti Bhavan, and so this brother took us up to 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 the top of Om Shanti Bhavan, you know, the brother side, I think, or sister side, I can't remember. And so my mom said she looked through the window and she just saw all these people in white and then she saw this one person on stage in white and she just felt this peace and she felt, wow, this is something really unique and special. And then obviously after that, she, we all forgot about, she, all forgot, she forgot about the experience, you know, and then we, because we only live about five minutes away from Global Corporation House so, and always have done. So we, um, I think a year or two later, a few years later, we used to drive past Global House to go to our community gatherings in uh, the, the local sports centre. And so mum always wondered what this place was. And she walked in one day and she realised it was the same place we visited in Abu. And then she was interested and she started doing the course. And so we were so young, so she, she had to take us with, with her. <laughs> we had no choice, couldn't leave us at home. So yeah, so we just grew up around... I've grown up, it's unusual because there are a couple of other of my friends who are young BKs. Um, I mean, there's one young BK who is an, who has BK ancestry, <laughs> which you're not supposed to have, <laughs> but she does. And it's, you know, we always laugh, <laughs> laugh about that because, you know, it's a, it's a unique experience growing up in Gyan. It's really not any better or worse than, than not, you know, it, I think it comes with its own complications. Um, <clears throat> and just like everything else does. So Baba doesn't give us a uh, get out of jail free card. <laughs> he gives, you know, <laughs> I had to work hard to to make it something that I wanted um, from life. Can you yeah, tell us uh, the moment when you chose for yourself? I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> um, I I had a really good upbringing in terms of Gyan. I had, so, it was so great. Daddy was, you know, the family in Global House London was massive, so I had a really good children's class and and grew up and took a lovely Kamar's class and great teachers and you know just a nice family feeling really. And I was interested in Gyan as a young as a young guy, but I was never like I really need this. But I think actually when I left the drama, then I went to drama school. Funny enough, I started performing in Global House. I caught the bug from Global House when I was about seven because we used to do pantomimes every year. And that's where I started. That's where I started performing. So I owe my entire career and choice of my career to Baba. And so if anything goes wrong, I say, this is your fault. <laughs> you have to deal with it. I know he sometimes he does explicitly say, I don't get involved in your work life, but I do really, because I didn't choose. I really didn't choose. Then I happened to go to a drama a high school that had that that year had become a performing arts specialist high school. So things just fell into place. And then I happened to get into 
drum schools, like quite prestigious drum schools. And so I thought, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> you know, it was never a career choice, really. It was something that I just fell into and I loved. And I, I had lots of friends in the year that I was in the year below who were just in, happened to be insanely talented and also did the same thing. There was too much serendipity for it to be a coincidence. So when I left drama school was really the time where I thought, gosh, I really need, I really need this because drama school was, um, I loved it. It's best and worst three years of my life, I say, because <laughs> um, I loved it so much. I loved, and I'm still friends with all of them and I loved the training and it, it took me out of a laziness, but it also showed me a lot about myself and, and I wasn't really practicing. Those three years was, I was living at home, which I was grateful for. Now, now I'm grateful for in hindsight, but um, I was really only just coming home to sleep. The rest of the time I was out because it was quite long days and intense every day for three years. So it wasn't a, it was really a throwing myself into a completely different world. So when I left drama school, I realized towards the end of my third year that this is what I need to connect myself into Raj Yoga again. Because up until that point, it was really all handed to me on silver platter. It was like going to my auntie's home. <laughs> <laughs> so so I had to make the decisions so I think probably around then my my early 20s 20 22 23 um because I also went to drama school a bit late so uh came out at 23 and it's been a really and I, and I threw myself into the, this world again as well you know um I'm that kind of person throw myself in and then figure it out while you're doing learn the lessons or I have been that kind of person yeah and then I just have have been given the opportunity and taken the opportunity to do service which has really helped me um grow and learn and, and the family i always used to complain you know that <laughs> it, it sounds like an odd complaint but you know people young people around me in, in the house would would get in trouble for doing things little things that weren't so you know that weren't like according to not bad things but just according to the, the systems of the house you know no one would ever tell me off. <laughs> they do something, they get in trouble. I do the exact same thing and no one would say anything, you know. And I used to always think, why? I, used to, I even said it to, to Maureen once. I said, why am I not, why do you not tell me off for anything, you know? What is it about me? Are you scared? Because I used to think, I'd rather know, you know, I'd rather know. And so just lots of really interesting experiences being in the house. And then Daddy, of course, gave... You know, she pulled me out of my, she came to know that I sang because I started, I trained in musical theatre. That's my background. Um, and so she she came to know that I could sing and she, she, she knew, she kept her eye on me since I was a kid actually, but not so much interaction, but as an adult, yes, a bit more. And she kept an eye on me. So she'd get me to sing every so often and break the sanskar of, that I'd learned at drama school <laughs> of fear and ego. <laughs> Uh, part of that sanskar and then um so she was and she was really uh she has been and this continues to be a a good guide for me i think um you know and she i i really have always felt that i'm in this industry purely for service um and i made that choice a few years ago as well i, I had to reprioritize because it's a it's not a very healthy industry in terms of what what feelings it brings up in you and the rejection and the, the process just it's not it's not healthy at all for any human being <laughs> let alone one on a spiritual path so i had to question am i am i in this right the right industry and and everything felt right about it but i needed to reprioritize so once i did that it was like jobs came flying in and baba was really just uh, you know i still feel that i'm in this industry for service sake um not that I need to do service, but that someone needs to be in the in the middle of it to to help support, you know. Um, so yeah, it's that's the kind of world that I'm in, and haven't been working so much for the last year, but I'm grateful for that. I was working right up until we locked down here, <clears throat> um, and I was grateful for that. So yeah, and I've got to work with some really wonderful people, some some great actors, some, and so I think. You know, and I always offer meditation to them. <laughs> it's it's a conversation that comes up very quickly in <laughs> in our mostly now because they ask actually they 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 check you know just as you're getting to know each other. Um, it's it's a conversation that I love having. Um, so yeah, yeah. So now we're just there's lots of focus on public events in Global House. Now we do a lot of our stuff online. 
Um, and we're also preparing for for a few daddy daddy janky tributes events and stuff in the house. Um, yeah, waiting to see what happens, what what drama brings. But yeah, I feel I'm in a much different place now than I was a few years ago. Personally speaking, in my in terms of my relationship with service, even and um, I think Bob was really underlining you know focus on yourself that's all you need to do <laughs> really all you need to do don't even worry about work which i haven't so i'm grateful because that's a young person's um and there are bks who have you know who speak to us about sometimes you focusing on those things and because they're they're afraid that we're going to make the mistakes that they made um and that's often a a big a, a big way to which is completely understandable you know even daddy was like that <clears throat> to a certain extent um, and I, so I appreciate the the support and feedback, but it's also really good for us to take to have those so that we can make the decisions that we need to make for ourselves. Because I find the younger generation of BKs have a very different. I mean, Judy, you'll know. You know, we have a very different mentality towards this life. Um, because on one hand, we have to live in it. You know, we can't just. <laughs> I mean, that's not just that's not just a young person's thing, but. Um, but also, you know, we've, uh, there's all of these levels of how much of us do we need to do, how much of this life do we need to aspire to? Do we need to have career goals? You know, we still need to live a world in a world that is existing. But so it's been a real interesting balancing act, really. And I think the older we get, the more we're like, yeah, yeah, I know this is a good balance now. But I know in the future it's going to change. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm just very grateful for it all, everything.